And one thing that I wanted to ask is that usually in this narrative, law enforcement has been claiming that um, encryption may be an obstacle to investigations and to fighting crime. And sometimes there are even law enforcement experts that have been said that, that have been saying that encryption is not a, a measure that prevents them to have access to the content or to the information that they want. That's the, allegedly an argument of the companies trying to prevent them to have access to this information. Uh, one thing and, or one strategy they, they, that they can be referring to is the, uh, man in the, the so-called man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, but there are other ways of circumventing encryption and obviously you can always force uh, companies to build in uh, security holes in encryption. So I wanted you to uh, explain us a little bit more about um, how the man-in-the-middle attack works, if those claims of uh, encryption being actually just an argument and not a technical excuse for providing company if they are true. And um, in case of uh, these alternatives of forcing companies to build in security holes into the product, how do that um, can be hurtful for the users? Sure. Um, so there's a lot to unpack there. I think the first thing that you need to know um, is that encryption is not is not a panacea. It does not solve all problems. Um, and even if you use the strongest encryption available, there are always ways to break into it. Um, now, that said, encryption is the best defense against mass surveillance. Um, it, makes encryption, it makes surveillance a lot more expensive. You can't um, collect a lot of information off the wire if that information is all encrypted, which means it pushes governments toward more targeted individualized surveillance, which we think is a good thing. Um, now, in those targeted scenarios, there are a lot of ways that governments have still to get access to encrypted data, um, which means it requires users and companies not only to implement encryption, but also to implement other practices, um, good digital security hygiene is what we call it, um, to continue to protect that data, to add those extra levels that you need. So for example, um, man in the middle attacks are when um, people can make you feel like, the very simplified explanation, people can make you feel like um, you're communicating with another person and you might actually be communicating with that person, um, but somebody is coming in and able to see that communication as it happens, um, or spoofing the party on the other end, and so you're actually communicating with this person who is not who you think you're talking to. Um, now, companies like Signal, um, well, designed by Open Whispers, Whisper Systems have tried to solve that by indicating to users when um, their friend's um, keys change. And so they will say, you know, you're, the person on the other end has the new key. And they encourage you to verify that that is still that person. So to reach out, either call them and say, has your key changed? Um, or send them a, a message on a different channel. And that is to try to verify, um, to cut off these men in the middle attacks. Now, not everybody does that, which means they could be susceptible. And those are the, the practices that people need to get um, accustomed to if they do want to be secure um, and protect themselves. Um, other things are not clicking on random links in email um, or downloading um, strained software because these can also compromise the endpoints, um, the devices that you're communicating on, which is another vulnerability. Um, in encryption. Um, weak encryption can be compromised or brute forced often. Um, improperly implemented encryption, which we see often um, can have vulnerabilities that people can push through. There are a lot of different ways, um, which is why we say that companies should be incentivized, again, to, to donate, to put all of these resources that they can into making their devices secure. Because even in that scenario, there are a lot of weaknesses that make people insecure. Um, and not only insecure to governments, but insecure to bad actors. And so if you start talking about requiring companies to take resources away from security and design a product, um, I think I've heard somebody explain it as encryption that works sometimes, but is designed to fail. And you can't decide when those failures are going to happen. Um, and that's just a bad model overall.